live from JMT Studios, it's time for Two Jersey Kids, the best video game podcast on the planet. This is up, everybody! This is episode 39 of Two Jersey Kids. We are a video game podcast, if you didn't hear in the intro that we, new intro that we recorded last week, thanks to Gary's beautiful, sexy voice. You know, I actually listened to that. Uh, I, I was like, yeah, I gotta hear this again, because I, you know, I did it, and you, you, you think you sound a certain way when you do it, and I listened to it, and I was like, uh, <laughs> it's wanna, okay, it's wanna, okay, it's you decent. You wanna try a new one after we're done recording? I could, I, I could do a deeper voice instead of, I don't know, it didn't sound quite as, uh, as a move, or movie announcer as my previous intro. Okay, well, if you guys hear a new intro, then this would be the reason why, because we just did this diatribe right at the beginning. But yeah, I am the host of this video game podcast car crash that is going to happen uh, this Friday. You know, it's in your ear holes right now. And alongside me, talking to me, is my best friend, the best to Kendler in the business. How are you doing today, Gary? Doing pretty good. Doing, doing well. I have a uh... I mean, got home from work not too long ago. It's kind of rainy here in New Jersey. It's kind of been raining for like two weeks straight, it feels like. It, it sucked. When I got, I, I was lucky enough to get home from work at like 5.30ish. Uh, I got inside and all of a sudden it just fucking started downpouring. Yeah. Like fucking, I was getting scared because I was hearing like the wind was going nuts. I could barely see outside fucking <laughs> pouring thunder like crazy. I thought I was like, it was like when we were back at the Philly Stadium way back when. Remember that? Oh when my we were, God. We that were shit in was like crazy. a typhoon. <laughs> yeah, we left the game early because it was like really coming down. The Phillies were, of course, getting killed, I think. We were fucking walking and, to our car and like the winds were so strong. Yeah. Like we were getting pushed close to the street. You <sighs> like, I couldn't tell where I was. You grabbed me, pulled me uh, farther away from the street, which was nice. My mom ended up getting hit with a branch, had a bruise yeah. for the next few days. It was fucking nuts. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah, I, what was it? Um, Oh, no, I was driving home tonight even. I had that. I had like a similar experience where, you know, I'm not someone that like drives 25 miles an hour when it starts just like drizzling, but like, holy shit though. I was driving home. I had the windshield wipers on the highest setting and I still couldn't that's see. Like I was doing like 30 miles an hour. That's the scariest thing is when your windshield wipers are going fucking a mile yeah. a minute, you feel like they're about to fall off because they're going so fast yeah. and you still can't see shit. That it is where it, when it gets scary. Uh, <laughs> but uh, enough small talk about the weather. Even though it wasn't really small talk. But, uh, yeah, we release every Tuesday and Friday. Yay! Uh, this is going to be the news episode. We're going to break down a bunch of stuff. It's going to be exciting, I'm sure. Uh, all you new listeners out there, you should stick to the end. And if you're a continuing listener, we appreciate you so much. Please go follow us on Twitter at Two Jersey Kids when you get a chance. Uh, but before we get into the news, Gary, what have you been up to this past week since we last recorded? What have you been doing? Any games you've been playing? Any movies you've been watching? Anything you've been doing? Or you just been sitting around letting your jingly janglies hop out, a fly all <laughs> over the place? You know? Uh, I don't know what that really means, but uh, <laughs> I, I would say that the the I don't know. I, I've been basically like looking at more PC stuff. Like I was mentioning in the last episode, I've been uh, trying to build sort of like a, a beginner's game or PC, you know, one that, uh, one that doesn't really break the bank, the the budget that I currently have. Um, so I've been kind of like uh, how's that going? Talking, it's going all right. You know, I, I'm basically the money's there. I just have to figure out what the hell you're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be buying. Yes, yeah, so I'll be talking to uh, my man Gavin, my brother-in-law. He's he's the computer genius in the What's in the up, family. Gavin, give us a rating. Hey. Shout out at Gavin Prince, or I'm not even sure what his Twitter handle is anymore. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of been the gaming, really. I haven't played uh, much PS4 lately. I just because there's haven't such a lull in games, you can't find anything. <laughs> well, maybe okay. the feature we're going to be talking about today can help you out, or maybe we'll uh, get more into an argument. Who knows? <laughs> probably, bo- probably, probably an argument, maybe both. But um, <laughs> Discussion. actually, I think. Honestly, though, the, the most in, uh, interesting thing that happened to me this week, uh, I was at work, and I work where the, where the Flyers practice, and every now and then you'll see, like, players come in or, you know, like, family members of players come in. And uh, I saw, actually, Wayne Simmons. He came into yeah, the store. That's cool. Uh, walked in with his girlfriend, got a couple jerseys. It was kind of cool just seeing an NHL player kind of, like, <laughs> two feet from me. Um, especially one as, as did, like— did you, ask the, did you ask him why the team is so fucking average? <laughs> I don't think that would have went over too well. So no, no I, I avoided that question. I absolutely did. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was the, basically the most interesting. I guess the highlight of my week, as sad as that may seem. That sounds so but, sad, Gary. <laughs> it wasn't really the highlight, but it was. It was <laughs> definitely fun. It's cool though seeing a, a sports figure outside of you know 
when you yeah. see him on TV. I remember uh, one time when I was getting dropped off from my dad, uh, my mom was picking me up, and she had to go in the store. And, like, we parked. I don't know. If, did we ever tell you this story, Gary? Where, like, she went into the grocery store, and she's like, I think I just saw Jimmy Rollins. Like, the shortstops from the, uh, the Major yeah. League Baseball team, the Phillies. I think I saw Jimmy Rollins. I'm like, nah, you're just you're messing around. I don't believe you. She's like, no, come on in. Let's go check it. Let's see if we can go find him. Like, and I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, that's exactly – not thinking to myself. I said this out yeah. loud. That's exactly what he wants is he just grocery shopping like a normal adult and just like two, like a mom and like a little kid, like sh- looking around the corner trying to see him. And then we drove away, and I saw like a big, gigantic, like white Escalade, which I think is what he drove. And I was like, yeah, that was probably him. But uh, yeah. I was like, I don't want to interrupt these. These are normal people just trying to do their day-to-day thing. That's always the thing. I always try to just not get in the way. Like, I mean, there's been so many different Flyers players, even Flyers coaches that have come in to where I work. And you just got to like, they're normal people, you know, just talk to them like normal people. Like, I, I could never go up to somebody, especially like when you're a kid, it's a different story. I think like when you're like 10 years old, you're like, hey, can I have your autograph? Can I get a picture? It's one thing. But when you're like, you know, 24 <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like Hi. get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, Gary, anyway. I guarantee it. We will be those people that will signing those autographs. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is quite the dream. Bold you prediction. Anyway, Bold prediction. Uh, Adam, what have you been up to uh, gaming wise? Gaming wise, um, really, just more of the surge. Uh, I finally got to the. It's basically the third boss. It's a fucking, like, a three-stage boss, which is kind of cool. First stage is, like, it's like a gigantic machine, so you're trying to get to the core of the boss. Fucking attacking you with claws. I was a- I'm was finally able to beat that pretty relatively easy without taking any hits. Um, but I still haven't figured out the second stage quite as much because there's, like, six torches, like, torch arms that hang down, and they all swing at you. So you kind of have to, like, stick and dodge and move. And I have not gotten far enough to beat that. Uh, I still am not uh, too, you know... I guess not savvy enough to dodge all those things, and it's kind of frustrating. So I took a break from it today. So when I got home, I saw, uh, I think it was like on the Twitter feed or when I was just checking the PSN store, I saw that you're able to rent Logan, which is the the fi- basically final Wolverine mu- movie that Hugh Jackman's going to be in um, uh, that was on PSN because I never actually saw it. So I decided to rent that fucking fantastic movie. Got tugged at the emotional heartstrings. Uh, it was finally, like, the Wolverine movie that you want to see. It's just because he's fucking using his claws and stabbing people in the face and cutting off limbs. <laughs> it's fucking rad. It's not this PG-13 bullshit where he stabs them and you don't see any blood come out and they just fall. Uh, it's, like, legit, hardcore, rated R style. It's it's an awesome movie. I highly recommend anybody uh, go watch it. I feel like you should be able to watch it if you haven't watched the other X-Men. You should be able to somewhat understand. There's some slight things, but you could figure it out relatively easily. Um, then I think they did a... It's a very good movie. I highly recommend. And then afterwards, uh, I did think about playing The Surge, but then I was like, nah, I'm not really feeling... I, I need a break from fighting that boss over and over again. Because, you know, after a while, you gotta just take a step back. And I'm sure when I hop back in, I'll fucking get through the torches like like butter. Because, you know, after playing well, something for a while, and you, you have to take, take a step back, and then you come back in, and all of a sudden you just are a lot better at it. I, I was... I mean, I completely agree. And I was also going to say, didn't the um, when you were playing the search before, wasn't the the dodging kind of like wonky, as you were saying? Like, yeah, it's still isn't that kind of it's got to be a pain in the ass when you got to dodge so much stuff, especially when the mechanic isn't really there. Yeah, it's still a little, uh, still definitely a little wonky. Doesn't respond as much as I want to, but I feel like I've sort of it's sort of playing it enough. I sort of understand now, like how when I should dodge, it's not quite what I want it when I want it to. I have to do it slum somewhat earlier be more conservative which it doesn't hurt in this style of game but it's going to be definitely difficult in this portion of the boss fight where uh, a bunch of uh, torch arms are coming at you left and right so uh we'll see how it goes i've, I've toyed with the idea of i wanted to like live stream uh me playing you know the surge and maybe i'll wait until i finally beat this boss until i get to the next portion of the game to finally live stream it uh or maybe I'll live stream it when I fight this boss because I, I remember I live streamed uh, Dark Souls 3 boss that I fought or Bloodborne. It was one of them. And I just fucking destroyed him. I didn't expect that it's happening. I got wrecked the past few times. Started live streaming and I knew that I was going to be out for the audience under pressure. 
crushed it <laughs> dude i'm telling you whenever i play i remember i used to stream destiny for a little bit and that game too like i would just all of a sudden i would start pulling off crazy shit i think it's just because you're like oh man people are gonna be watching even though like no one zero. usually does the, yeah the zero numbers up there <laughs> yeah exactly I had like uh, I think my my friend Ben was watching from work because you know that's what you do at work nowadays. You watch people stream video games, um, but yeah, he was watching me and I, I killed it. You killed, killed it, it, crushed it. Yeah, uh, what I was gonna say. Also, I know we both I like I put it in the Google Doc. It's not really news, but I kind of want to mention it because it's kind of like I was reading it because it's a long ass article on from PC Gamer about Eve Online again because we love those stories. But this one took like kind of like a weird. It was weird because it was basically some it it it, it was a con artist basically it, <laughs> infiltrating the ranks of this I forget what the, the title of the clan is um I don't know what the specifics are I don't really want to read the article I just want to go through like what the basics of what happened he like infiltrated the ranks of this you know well known clan or organization, friended them for sixteen months doing things, um, and then ended up stealing this person's prized possession, which apparently is like the most famous vessel in Eve because it has so many kill marks on it. It's like four hundred and some. Yeah, wait, and it and it's only produced once. I think they, they they only produce like one type of the ship and then never again. So the person yeah. that has it. You have that unique ship, and the reason like it made me sad is because he, he, the fact that he spent like sixteen months like befriending these people to finally just steal their shit, and it wasn't like a like a wealthy heist. Like they he didn't like get a lot of money specifically from it. Like it wasn't like a the largest heist out there. Um, but it, it hit on the heartstrings because like the guy at the end like f- said he was more sad not about the ship but about the fact that he lost a friendship. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, honestly though, you spend that much time with somebody. I mean, obviously this guy, both of these guys, put a lot of time into Eve Online, and yeah, you, know, you spend a lot of time with someone. You're, you're typing back and forth or talking. I'm not sure how you communicate in that game, but you spend a lot of time, and all of a sudden yeah. the guy's just like, all right, I'm going to take all your shit, and then uh, fuck you. Like, how's that feel? It and feels then like-, he, like he says, like, that, that's why he, like, enjoyed playing with him, because he felt like he was kind of, like, the same type of player. And now yeah. he's, like, questioning his, it's like, oh, well, was he ever that way? Like, was it legit friendship, or was this guy just being, you know, two-faced? And I never really had a friend. I'm like, oh, my God, that's just so <laughs> sad. What yeah, type he- of sadistic person does this to someone? A like, troll, like he- that's who. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And like usually these these stories, like these Eve Online stories, are like actually hilarious to read off. But this one, I agree, though. It was like That's kind so of like sad. an emotional thing. It was like, wow, it's it's pretty deep. Yeah, because I, I looked at like the the, the opening like uh, title of the article. It was kind of interesting. It was like a con artist um, like stealing from like a pirate organization. I was like, oh, maybe the, it's like a revenge story. Nope. Just some guy, you know, befriending them and then turning his back and stabbing on the back. Like, that's not cool. <laughs> and, and can I just say one thing? Um, 16 months. 16 <laughs> months this guy was friends with this guy. I mean, I would think or personally, I, this, if I'm trying to fake friendship with somebody, I could probably pull that off may, maybe for a week. Maybe. <laughs> but uh. 16 months... So that's Jesus. why this is why you guys know this friendship is real. Or Gary would have been gone after the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> very true. Uh, Gary, now we're done spewing the shit that we normally do at the beginning of the episode. It is time for this week in gaming history, brought to you by the Gatorade, but not really because we're not sponsored by them. But I like to say it because Gary gets upset. Go, Gary, go. All right, so the first game on the list for all the soccer fans out there, FIFA Soccer 97 was released on PlayStation back in, you guessed it, 1997. Now, I actually tried to look up the cover athlete. I like to mention sometimes like little historical facts, but I'll be honest with you, I really couldn't pronounce uh, the the name of the player actually on this team. It was a Brazilian soccer player. I know Adam's looking it up right Don't now. Don't worry, I got it. <laughs> Is it Bebeto? Because he doesn't really have a... Um, he has a full name, but they just refer to him like that, so I'm not really sure. We'll see. We'll see. Give me a sec. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, FIFA, Soccer 97. Second game up is The Sims Mega Deluxe, released on Windows back in 2004. Now, the Mega Deluxe uh, was basically like a, you get the base game and also the other expansions as well. So, in this particular 
package was the Hot Date expansion, Live in Large, and also House Party. Um, I actually never owned any of these expansions, but I did have the Sims Vacation, Sims Superstar, and Unleashed. Um, each of them had their own little perks to them, but I mentioned this game basically because uh, PC is kind of where I got my gaming start in addition to uh, the original PlayStation, and I sunk a lot of hours into the original Sims games. And to this day, I still think that the original Sims was the best Sims game. Uh, nothing else, in my opinion, has come close. Last, but not least, I have the game Siphon Filter 2. was released on PlayStation back in 2000. Now, again, I actually didn't have any experience with this particular game, but I know um, my brother-in-law, Gavin, was a huge fan of the original. And I'll have to ask him about this sometime, but I'm not sure if he was too thrilled with the sequel, even though apparently it got some pretty solid ratings. So I'll have to get his input on that. What's up, Adam? Um, I, I wasn't able to find <laughs> I couldn't find the name because I saw the European cover with somebody else, like David Ginoli, Ginola or something. Well, uh, the the um yeah, he was the European cover athlete. Yeah. But yeah, the other one was a, uh, a, a I believe a Brazilian soccer. I'm sorry, player. I couldn't help you out because I know I'm the best at pronouncing names. Oh, uh, you were just a cut above the rest. <laughs> but uh, in regards to siphon filter, I know there was always rumors about it, like making return, making. Uh, doing like something for PS4, there's always talks about the studio that uh, uh, developed Siphon's Filter 1 and 2, um, but now that de- that studio is actually moving on and they're developing Days Gone, which I'm sure we'll be seeing at this year's E3, I would believe. I believe it would be this year's E3, or maybe they'll just stay silent because I think it's going to be coming out this year. I feel like fall 2017, Days Gone, probably around Halloween. Makes sense. Zombies. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm scary. <laughs> What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, shall we move on to the news before I do anything more stupid? That's that's what all these people are here for. <laughs> oh, my stupidity! Well, you got or, well, buckets and buckets or, of it, or, or the news. But yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> this is silly me. It's just taking credit. You know, that's just my ego shining through. If you can't see it right now, just you know, it's probably because you're just listening. Uh, but Gary can see it for sure. Moving on. To this unfortunate news, apparently Red Dead Redemption 2 has been delayed and will launch in 2018, uh, publisher Rockstar Games announced. Uh, They said in a company-wide post, quote, This outlaw epic set across the vast and unforgiving American heartland will be the first Rockstar game created from the ground up for the latest generation of console hardware, and some extra time is necessary to ensure that we can deliver the best experience possible for our fans and uh it's kind of sad uh red dead redemption the update is red dead redemption has slipped into the next fiscal year according to take two interactive's latest quarterly earnings report that means it will launch sometime after april 1st 2018 it's kind of sad but it's also kind of expected because rockstar way back when when gta 5 was rumors coming around and they first talked about it it was delayed three times three times so you think they would know better. You think we would know better to believe certain dates. So it's just kind of sad. Uh, well, I want, what's your take on this, Gary? I was going to say it's disappointing. But at this point, I mean, I feel like so many games nowadays are just delayed. It's just like that's just part of the whole industry anymore. But, I mean, honestly, I'd rather have a game delayed and done right than have a game that's like, okay, this is our deadline. We have to meet it no matter what. And then you get a game like Mass Effect Andromeda, which disappoints everybody and releases with tons of bugs. So, yeah, I don't I mean, know. Take your pick. I forget which uh, famous developer said this, but if you uh, don't delay a game, you're risking it being a bad game. But if you delay it, you're – no, you can only – I forget that I just fucked up the quote. It's just something <laughs> about like if you <laughs> – if Man, you we were having a good day. We were having a great day. <laughs> Actually, I feel like this episode's going well, so don't fuck with it, Gary. Don't mess it with – I'm sorry. Um, but it's basically saying like if you delay it, it doesn't – turn it into a bad game it can only give it a chance of becoming great whereas yeah. if you don't delay it, it has a good chance of being bad like the good game yeah. can't come great when you don't delay it for more time Got to know um, that creative process but yeah um other than that it's pretty sad but i mean i feel like people are willing to wait for red dead redemption 2 uh from rockstar i mean we've been waiting for a while and the way we're going to talk about it later with GTA Five selling, I'm sure Rockstar is fine with delaying it. It's not going to hurt their sales. <laughs> yeah. um, but moving on, uh, this week Ubisoft decided to give us like a nice like teaser image 
uh, for Far Cry 5. Uh, I don't know, Gary, what do you think? Should I just go through the, like, the article, like, what it breaks down, or should we just, like, try to describe what's happening, like, what's going on, or are we just going to discuss our feelings, like, people can go out? Give give her a general overview, I guess, of uh, of the article. Yeah, and then we can just kind of discuss what the hell we think of it. I'm not going to go to the overview of the article. I'm going to describe the picture. Shall okay. I? So, okay. so, <laughs> right, I mean, basically describe like my feelings towards it because it, it it's definitely set in like Montana. I mean, that's given, and I'm kind of fascinated with the way it's going to go. But that's based on the the image. Of course, you have like the classic. I first see in the bottom right is the bow because Far Cry always has the bow in these games. You gotta uh, mention it, and it just feels like it it has like a cult christian cult vibe that's going on here not gonna lie it kind of feels like a last supper type deal that's going on you have the guy in the middle holding out his hands like kind of like jesus i guess uh with like somewhat of a long beard he's kind of trimmed got like glasses on staring straight at the picture i can tell right there that he's gonna be the main antagonist but the the difference thing with uh this than the other far cries is that they highlight more people in the image uh, where it would only be the main antagonist and the other ones like Far Cry 4, uh, you had Pagan Ming just right on the cover, and then you had Far Cry 3 with Voss, who was the, basically the main antagonist. But now you have multiple different guys, like a guy holding a revolver, sunglasses, all these guys basically look like they should be on Duck Dynasty. Um, a guy <laughs> holding a knife with a big chain holding a gigantic wolf, which is kind of cool. Then you have like a church in the background, um with the United States flag holding down, coming down in the middle. Then you have, like, in the also in the background, top right, you have, like, planes shooting down other planes, which is nuts. So maybe that's indicating that there's going to be some sort of flight. Um, and then the, the very, pro, like, uh, pro, provocative thing that's going on the bottom left with, like, some dude, like, basically tied up with sinner carved in the back of him. Um Maybe that's you right now. Maybe you get caught, and that's what happens to you in the beginning of the game. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, that's somewhat of a breakdown. I, I mean, that's the best way I can describe it on audio. If you haven't seen it, go – if you're listening on your phone, just search it, and then uh, we're about to talk about it. So, yeah, Gary, I don't, what's your initial thoughts about what you're seeing here? Well, actually, in, in addition to what you're mentioning about the photo, um, in the picture – Next to the church, you have the the American flag and also their, I guess, their cult flag flying. Oh, and the yeah. American flag is actually below the cult flag, oh, which is yeah. not really the typical uh, flag flying etiquette. But anyway, and also um, I see in the background, there's apparently there's isn't there an explosion going on? Like if you look yeah. to the back right of the the female, it looks like there's an American base or something getting blown up because it has a American flag back there. So, yeah, uh, I have to say. Um, I'm really excited about this. Yes, I know, me too. I know. We already talked about this before about the the game. It, this is back when the rumors were that it might be a Wild West setting. But I'm just as excited about this Montana rural setting as I was for the Wild West because I feel like it can be so creepy. Like I, yeah. I said before, you can really get like that creepy like Call backwoods. Five. Yeah, and like I mean, you can just go so many different directions with it. So I'm really excited um, I'm, to I, see. I feel you know, like this, this. Yeah, this is definitely making me more excited than the wild west because now i'm kind of thinking like how are they going to incorporate this into modern day america like how it how are how is this going to happen because you know what's going to happen you're going to be the protagonist that's going around going around the different encampments and blowing shit up and taking them over like how how are they going to play this off in normal america is this going to be like a alternate history like where like government doesn't exist or is it are you just going to be in like such a backwoods Montana where no one has a well, clue what's going on. Montana is pretty. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. It is pretty, uh, <laughs> you know, spaced out. There's a lot of open land and stuff. Mm. So it's not too far fetched, I guess. Gary, to have... let, me, let me pull up, pull up a map. Okay. You are, you are correct. Montana is large. <laughs> Desolate. Yes. <laughs> but, um, I have to say, I, I wanted to mention this too. I don't know about you guys or the people listening. I kind of get this, um, like a Bioshock type of vibe. Like the the creepiness, like I was saying, you have like the the really creepy villain, and then also the fact that you're going to be kind of like in this remote area where you're kind of on your own. I mean, granted, that's what Far Cry is all about, but I don't know. I just got that Bioshock feeling that uh, that I loved. I love that kind of suspenseful uneasiness when you're playing a video game. It's kind of kind of awesome. Yeah, I'm just curious how. Uh, I'm just curious how how they're going to tell the story. Like, how are you going to get roped into this? Are you just going to be like the same old? Uh, tourists coming from out of town 
Uh, I just like how this is definitely taking a different route than what we're used to when it comes to Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4, where it's just like, oh, one big bad guy that you focus on, and then just a bunch of henchmen. Maybe. But it seems like this is going to be, you have the main guy who's like the cult leader, and then you have like other specific other people who you still can they're gonna have a role in two because they're gonna have character names they're not just gonna be like henchmen one and two maybe you'll be going around trying to take them out Uh, who knows maybe um i mean there's a lot of i think there's a lot of ways that you could have the story start i mean maybe you're maybe you're someone that likes to hike maybe you're hiking through a certain area you get caught up in this or maybe you're going on vacation you're flying you crash and then you're held captive i mean there's a lot of different ways they could start oh, off the campaign, I think. You're making me scared now, Gary, for me taking my flight next week <laughs> to California. <laughs> I'll be going Something over tell- Montana. Something tells me that uh, the story of Far Cry won't unfold. What? Hope- no? You don't think that'll actually happen? Yeah. I hope not. Shit, I'll probably be dead in a minute if that any of this shit happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I'm not very much of a survivalist. I didn't do uh, Boy Scouts, unfortunately. Uh, but anything to say on Far Cry three, Five before we move on? Uh, I mean, I'm just really excited for it. Honestly, I I, I know that's basically uh, common sense, as Adam, of course, is you know basically showing me right no, now. No, that's, that's not um, what I. It was I just like, it was a common sense gesture that I did, but it wasn't for what you were saying. I'll say I'll no. say in a minute when you're done. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. I played Far Cry Four. I enjoyed that game, but I think the biggest thing missing from it was the fact that, you know, the the main prota- our main antagonist wasn't really that interesting or someone that you could really hate. And I think that at least with this game, from what I'm seeing right now, you could probably, I, I think this villain is just going to be a lot stronger. You're going to have a lot. I hate him already. Sh- <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to be a. You're obviously going to have a cult situation here, and I just think that they can really basically hit the ball out of the park with this game. I'm really excited to see what they uh, what they do. Thank you. And I'm sure we're going to see uh, – they're going to have a reveal event tomorrow when this actually is out. Uh, so sorry we can't comment on like the reveal event, So, but we will probably be tweeting about it. Uh, so that's exciting to learn more. But the common sense thing that I, uh, I remembered is that I saw on Twitter like GameSpot released a poll uh, – about what's the best Far Cry, and they had Far Cry 2, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, Far Cry 3, and Far Cry Primal. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Is this even a question? Is this really a question? We obviously know what the best Far Cry is. It's 3. Yeah. No doubt. Hands down, no well, did they, or butts. What were the results, though? Far Cry 3, I think, is at like 60% right now. Yeah, it should be. I, that was, I mean, I, I've only played Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4, so I can't speak for the first couple games, but... Far Cry 3 just, I mean, you had Voss, we already talked about him before um, in one of our half episodes, but he was just such a great villain. Like, he, he just pissed you off every time he was on on the screen, just pissed yeah. you off some way. Because either he was mocking you, making fun of you, taunting you, it was just perfect, perfect villain. <laughs> uh, yeah, moving on, PlayStation Store now has a curation. From big developers uh, over at Kotaku, Luke Plunkett writes, As we discussed, Steve's implementation of third-party curation has been a bit of a mess, so it'll be interesting to see how Sony fares now that they're trying something similar. I didn't even know Valve is doing curation. (laughs) It's like we're a news podcast or something. (laughs) Launching today, the creators is an attempt by Sony to get curation on the PlayStation Store only instead of turning to influencers they have asked people responsible for making games to do it instead the initial lineup of creators include playstation boss Sue yushida the development team behind final fantasy 15 media molecule uh co-founder shibaya ready and cappy and there's plenty more um basically i'm not really ignoring i'm ignoring the article because they mentioned certain things like they are chosen um but i just sort of like it gave a brief overview because there's a lot more uh, developers now out like for curation. There's Herman Hulst of uh, Horizon. There's the Naughty Dog developing team, I, th- I believe Naughty Dog. It could be Naughty Dog. The people also behind like Rogue Legacy, um, a bunch of different uh, developers that are now uh, doing this curation thing, which I'm kind of excited about because it helps uh, people that are interested in finding games like comb through all the filth. That is on the pl- that's getting there on the PlayStation <laughs> Store where there's a bunch of Filth? random, random shit. There's a bunch of random shit that we don't need on the PlayStation Store. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's good, and uh, I've looked at like some of the suggestions. I'm like, yeah, per- perfectly reasonable, perfectly reasonable choices, and 
And I know you mentioned that in that article mentions few games that didn't really get you uh, too no, I, wet look, under I, the britches. I was <laughs> I was going to say, you know, look, I I think it's a good feature if you're looking for a new game. It's not a bad thing to have a little more direction. I know there's times where I go in the PlayStation Store and like you're looking around and you don't really know what the hell to look at. Like not not all the names are necessarily familiar to you. So, I mean, if you see someone like, for example, you're saying, I guess, what was it, the Horizon? developer what, what was herman hulst yeah you were saying how he was recommending certain games i mean yeah you, know, you had a, had a positive experience with horizon zero dawn and mm-hmm. you know yeah. maybe, you, maybe you trust his opinion more you can go out and see what he recommends that's solid, a good idea solid list uncharted 4 last guardian metal gear solid 5 inside until dawn street fighter 5 bloodborne final fantasy 15 and the witcher solid. now see now see those those games i could i could see okay but the other ones i was mentioning earlier um this is by way in our Google Doc that I commented on this, but uh, one of the developers, I guess, uh, recommended games like Sports Trends, Video Ball, Sound Shapes. I am not familiar with any of these, and frankly, it doesn't sound that exciting to me personally. All right, I'm uh, going to see what Drinkbox Studios behind Guacamole. Of course, they have Guacamole on it. Then you have Spelunky, <laughs> Solid Game, N Plus Plus, Shovel Knight, uh, Fez, Axiom Verse, Inside, Super Meat Boy, Sound Shapes. See. This is what I'm liking about it. You have like the third, the AAA developers, you know, uh, commenting like big AAA games that they're interested in. And then you also have like these indie developers who are more interested in these indie games because they develop them. So I feel like you can you can get your mix of games that you'd want if you're like if you know like if you go through all of these like curators and you find someone that actually you can you know relate with like those are the type of games that you're interested in you can then uh when you're looking for a new game go back to that person and see if their list has changed or if there's another game on that list you haven't played yet and i feel like it's fantastic it's like the same thing with people getting um enjoying certain games like they go off of uh video game journalists and their opinions because they know they can relate more with that journalist and how they play games and what they're more related to and like what they're into so i feel like this is definitely a step in the right direction for people to find games that they're very interested in um so and i made mention of games you could check out like the the back batman collection edition so you can play the first two games which i feel like you enjoy yeah i mean i think that the uh i think this makes just overall the PlayStation Store more user friendly. You can yeah. obviously find things that you want to find, and that's what it's basically there for. So, oh, they're actually updating things, and making it somewhat better. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine uh, that. Moving on, the Xbox Game Pass is going to be launching June first. But if you have Xbox Live Gold account, you can actually do it now. And according to uh, Xbox Wire, quote. When the Xbox Game Pass launches, you can download and play a broad range of games in full fidelity on your Xbox One or Xbox One S console, including blockbusters like Halo 5 Guardians, (coughs) NBA 2K16, Payday 2, and you also have fun for the whole family like Lego Batman, Banjo-Kazooie, Viva Pinata, retro and classic games like Mega Man Legacy Collection, Streets of Rage, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, and of course, Xbox Game Pass has a number of great first-person shoot, first-person and third-person shooter games, including all three titles in the amazing Bio Fran- BioShock franchise, Gears of War 1 through 3, Gears Ultimate, Perfect Dark Zero, Oh, yeah, Perfect Dark Zero, Borderlands, and more. But the Xbox Game Pass experience doesn't stop there. At launch, members can also explore classic Xbox hits and community favorites like Saints Row 4, Reelected, The Golf Club, Terraria, Resident Evil Zero, XCOM, Enemy Within, Mad Max, Night Squad, and many, many more games. Unbeatable. That's that's fucking, not going to lie, this is better than I originally expected. And I went, yeah. What's your thoughts, Gary? Um, it's just like I said, <laughs> unbeatable. The, the lineup is amazing. I mean, you have I mean, seriously Bioshock. The whole every game in the Bioshock franchise that's that is like easily like a month or two of your time. Yep. Or more. I mean, depending on how much you uh, how much time you want to take in the game. Yeah, exactly. There's just so many great games. I mean, Gears of War, legendary. Halo, legendary. NBA, awesome. It's just it's just awesome. I mean, if they had now, I will say, if they had Lego Star Wars instead of Lego Batman, I would play Lego Batman. I'm not gonna lie, but Lego Star Wars, though, get it in there. <laughs> then uh, it's a there, plus. There could be Lego Star Wars in there, but this is all that they mentioned, like highlighted, yeah. Gary. So, uh, oh, I know, I'm just being an idiot. <laughs> idiot. So, I mean, if you really want me to, I can go look at a full playlist if you want to read the next article, but uh, or you no, can just... look at a full playlist. But yeah, this is fucking insane. 
uh, like Bioshock, Gears of War, the Ultimate Edition as well. Then you have Borderlands, which is a solid franchise um, or a solid game. The first also, one. Then you have Halo Five, which is like a just insane that they're offering this free for people just to check out the Halo Five franchise, even though it doesn't didn't do too well like story wise. But I mean, getting for free, I feel like people are be excited, and the online of that game is actually very very good. And don't sleep on XCOM either. That game's kind of kick-ass too. I played that a lot with a friend back in the day during in high school. Um, or actually, no. It was probably, I guess, early college. But yeah, played the hell out of that game. So much fun. A lot of strategic uh, elements to it, kind of commanding a, uh, a squad of soldiers and you know, killing some aliens in the process. What could possibly go wrong? I think everybody loves XCOM, Gary. I think it's a well-known thing that a lot of people know of XCOM. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe hey, I'm just like a dick right now. You probably are, yeah. But I'm, but I'm explaining. I'm explaining because I'm a nice person. Yeah. Uh, good job, Gary. I love it. I love it. Moving on. There has been more Mario and Rabbits RPG details uh, that have been released. Uh, Layer Frank breaks it down over a Polygon. Yesterday, a leak of key art for uh, Mario and Rabbits Kingdom Battle has led to more information about the still unannounced Nintendo Switch. Uh, Nintendo Switch game. Nintendo World Report shared slides from an apparent Ubisoft presentation that gives a sense of how the crossover role-playing game works. Nintendo World Report credits an anonymous source for the images, which use a combination of new and similar art as, as the art posted on the WWG yesterday. The first of the slides suggests that Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle will have a 65-35 balance of turn-based fighting and exploration. The game's actions will be the game's action will be weapons based, as evident from the initial art leak. And each of the playable Mario and Raving Rabbits heroes will have a quote unquote unique playing style. Players should also look forward to a two player co op feature and a twenty hour story mode, according to the slides. As for exploration, there are quote four world environments to discover and quote filled with Easter eggs and puzzles. Here's the strangest part about this section of the game: the presentation suggests that players don't actually take control of Mario and Rabbit heroes while adventuring around the world, and they instead direct them to where they need to go by using an original character named Tarito. 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 Rio. Sure. Name pronunciation. Aces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the part sounds a little odd considering the emphasis on each hero's signature style and personality. Take a look at this image, which defines how eight playable characters are seen in combined Mario and Rabbids universe. Uh, you, uh, loving uh, the Peach is referred to as the badass princess. Um, but yeah. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is expected to launch between August and September. Uh, there has been no comments about this. Uh, Gary, do you have any thoughts on this? Or you just want me to go. Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. Uh, I do find this kind of interesting that this is going to be like an RPG. Uh, I wonder how how smoothly it will run. Uh, I wonder if it's going to get into the kind of the same vein as what people love about Paper Mario and the original Mario RPG. Um, it's also fascinating that it is Ubisoft specifically that's the developer for this game, and I, I'm just kind of wondering if this is actually Nintendo's way, like, licensing out their property of trying to mend or build bridges between third parties now to get them over to their console um, and see if it, it does produce, because I also read another story that they brought over another... They brought, like, a... Um, old style street fighter game back to the switch um and i know uh i think capcom is looking i think capcom makes street fighter it's not like i'm running a podcast or anything and i should know this but uh they're actually looking to see how well it does on the switch and see if that's an avenue to continue i mean it's all about who purchases what um but yeah it, it'll be fascinating to see if this actually does well and Nintendo is happy with how what Ubisoft develops and Ubisoft is happy with working with Nintendo, uh, putting stuff on their platform. Maybe you could see other Ubisoft titles coming to the Switch, uh, which would be kind of cool. Far Cry on the go? Fucking rad. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Moving on. The PlayStation Network now has uh, 70 million Active users, Sony has disclosed. Um, they they also disclosed more information that PS4 users collectively spend 600 million hours every week on PlayStation 4, 
Also, Sony wants to further enhance the content and appeal of the PlayStation Plus to make it more attractive and, in turn, grow subscribers, subscriber figures. Uh, additionally, PlayStation Plus has 26.4 million paying members at the end of last fiscal year. Uh, that's 26.4 million users. That seems like a lot that's paying for this uh, this feature, which is kind of good uh, for PlayStation itself getting in that revenue, but the question I have asked, they want to further enhance the content. You know, way to enhance the, the features in PlayStation <laughs> Plus. Let me change my fucking name. Seriously. For the love of God. Can that finally happen? I mean, I, my God. I, I am still, to this day, handcuffed by my 13-year-old self. Exactly. Okay? I, I, I went along. I made his great name, Scarager18, and here <laughs> I am today in 2017, Still got the same name. Yep. It's a terrible name. Terrible. But yeah, I terrible. mean, you think by now, if they want to increase the uh, cons- the customer satisfaction, if they want to bring people in, they'd actually, I don't know, let us change our names. Give people the, fe- the features they want. I don't know. It sounds crazy to me. <laughs> I mean, Or uh, better yet, what's up? Uh, Xbox Live had that way back in <laughs> 360 days, which is insane. That's what I'm saying. Give people the features they want. Stop giving us this horseshit excuse that, oh, well, it's something with the net code. I don't really know what's going on. Like, no, don't. No. I'm sure. I really do think it's like it's a built in function from the, like they built up from what I remember listening to a lot of uh, more experts on PlayStation and itself. So the way they built like the the PSN from the ground up is just awful. Like it doesn't. Yeah, it's hard clearly. for them to ever change like your names because the way it's like associated with you, um, like your name, uh, it's something along the lines like your name is specifically associated with you. So changing it is really difficult in like the code itself. Um, so, uh, but I mean, it is their job as engineers. Me being a personal engineer, so I can crit- criticize other engineers. It's your job to problem solve this shit. So software engineers, system engineers, get your shit done. Listen to the man. Yeah, sing it. Moving on, the games with gold for Xbox have been announced. Uh, Speedrunners is free from June 1st all the way to the 30th, uh, while while the first... What the fuck is going on? Oh, and then Watch Dogs is free from June 16th to July 15th. Uh, fucking Eurogamer putting their shit in weird fucking formats. <laughs> Uh, then Xbox on Xbox 360, which you can obviously get on Xbox One because of backwards compatibility. You can get Assassin's Creed 3 from June 1st all the way to the 15th, and then followed by Dragon Age Origins from the 16th to the 30th. Gary, I was kind of confused by people when they were list- the saw these in articles. They were like, meh, this is an okay lineup. Not going to lie, the fact that it's Watch Dogs and you know, Dragon Age Origins for free this month, pretty solid. I feel like getting those for free... Um, maybe it's just because a lot of people have already played Dragon Age Origins because it's a, it's a great game, but the fact you're getting Watch Dogs, which a lot of people, some people didn't jump into, uh, which I personally did on the PS4, was a solid game, a solid open world game, uh, it was like Metacritic, like, high 70s, low 80s, I believe, um, and I feel like it's just, people are poo-pooing Watch Dogs for some reason, and I feel like... I think it's... I think it has to do with the fact that it didn't live up to the expectations that I had, if I remember correctly. I remember a lot of people being disappointed with Watch Dogs. Zero dollars, that's all I have to say. You're and, spending well, yeah. zero dollars on this, so no expectations and, whatsoever. And that's, and, and that's the thing. You, you think, I mean, in, that's, in that context, then it's definitely obviously worth the money, even exactly. though you're not spending any. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just feel like a lot of people have that, that negative uh, connection with Watch Dogs because it didn't really live up to the high expectations that I had. Because I guess it, what was it like the first real? It was one of the first few titles on PlayStation Four, like yeah, real, like first exclusive next, next gen game. Yeah, even though it came so, to PS3 and Xbox 360, I believe. Yeah, but uh, I mean the other games are are fine. I mean I haven't played Assassin's Creed Three, so I, I couldn't speak on that. But I know that was a letdown too as well. But for free, yeah. then if you haven't played it, you know. yeah, and Dragon Age. I mean I, I always enjoyed I enjoyed uh, Dragon Age. Two, I can't remember which one it was, but I played that one over a friend's house as well, and I had a good time with that. So I mean, free games. Hey, what the can't hell? Complain. It's like what I was saying is the fact that you play Watch Dogs for zero dollars changes the tune of the game. I played, I played The Order for five bucks. Game's fucking fantastic for five bucks. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. No Man's Sky, it's a gem. Five dollars. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. if somebody hopped in No Man's Sky for five bucks. I'm sure they would enjoy it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on. William D'Angelo over at uh, VG Charts writes, 
Grand Theft Auto V tops 80 million units sold. Publisher Take Two has revealed sales for Grand Theft Auto V and it has surpassed 80 million units. 75% of the sales are physical, while 25% are digital. The game is one of the best selling titles of all time. Quote The title continues to attract and delight new audiences, especially as the install base of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One expands further, said Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick. He continues by saying, quote, What's driven this is that consumers love this title and want more of it. End quote. It's not just Grand Theft Auto V that is performing well. Mafia 3 has sold more than 5 million units, while Civilization 6 has sold nearly 2 million units. The Civilization franchise has sold more than 40 million units worldwide. So, Take-Two Publisher, doing well, and then Rockstar as a developer for Grand Theft Auto V. Fucking top-notch. <laughs> Dude, this well, game just doesn't die. You, like, look, I, at, you look at the top, uh, top-selling top charts month after month after month. This game is like a zombie. It never fucking dies. It's either... It's like... it's, ne- it's The thing is, it's not like 10. It's never like at the bottom. It's like in the middle. It's like 5, 6, 4, sometimes 3. It's just like random. It's like this game never dies, and I don't get how. Yeah. This game was released in 2013. It's 2017. It's four years later. It's insane. I don't know. Great job by their uh, by their marketing team. Apparently, uh, getting the getting people to buy it, I convincing think just, people. I think it's just uh, you know, over time, well, people people have grown to love Grand Theft Auto. They know what Grand Theft Auto is. Like I'm, my girlfriend, who's not a big gamer, knows what Grand Theft Auto is and loves playing Grand Theft Auto. She loves just going around, <laughs> fucking murdering people and driving, and uh, it's like it, it's that's the thing is like Grand Theft Auto now. From way back when, when it, I guess, had a stigma back in the day when it was, you know, rated M and it was like, video games are bad. Then it, it slowly, like, that kind of publicity kind of, I guess, helped it in a way. And then it's become more and more of a, just everybody knows it. Everybody knows what Grand Theft Auto is. You don't even have to be a gamer to know what Grand Theft Auto is. Yep. And not to mention the uh, online version of that game has just taken off in yeah. obscene ways. I, I mean, I I personally never really played too much of the online, but it's wildly popular. My friends, so. my friends still play this to the game. Squirrel, shout out to Squirrel Rocket Society or Squirrel Rocket Club. I f- probably fucked it up, and they're probably gonna give me shit about it because I'm not, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but they always play. They still play that game to this day because they like doing like the like the races that are created. Uh, that you can create in Grand Theft Auto Online, which is another added feature um, that they enjoy. Um, kind of like uh, a new game that came out, Trackmania Lagoon, which is like a, a cult kind of following where it's like people build like insane tracks and drive around, do time travels and such. Moving on, uh, enough talking about me rambling. Yeah, I can't speak. Call of Duty World War II confirms you won't play as the Axis in single player. Leon Hurley of Games Writer Radar writes, After Call of Duty World War II featured what looked like a German officer prominently in some concept art, there was question about a playable Axis character in single player. Obviously, there will be an Axis character in multiplayer for... A wild developer, Sledgehammer, seemed to be skirting around the single-player side of things. Even in the recent making of Call of Duty World War II livestream, creative director Brett Robbins dodged, qu- dodged the issue. When asked if he could play his axes in the story, he replied, quote, I can't really talk about it directly. Let's leave that one to mystery, end quote, which is interesting and almost sounds like something uh, could have been brewing. Uh, but now there has been a Nile... Uh, from Michael Condry over at over on Twitter, uh, he says you'll fight and follow the Allied cause. The Axis power is a ferocious enemy, but no, you won't be playing as Axis in the campaign. So that's pretty fi- uh, final. Um, honestly, this I don't know if this is really much news. I mean, it would have been news if you could play as you know um, the Axis, but I mean that's that would be really strange to play as the other side. I feel like that yeah. would be kind of weird well has i'm not i mean correct me if i'm wrong but has any has Maybe there been a game that's yeah has there been a game that's allowed you to play on the on the nazi germany side i don't really think so so it's kind of like i mean i could see I, it i could see them doing something like doing like uh uh the ger- like german troops but they're not actually on like the nazi side like they're you know trying to coup from the inside i could see that yeah well that see that'd be so cheesy though yeah. that, and that's the thing they would have to do like i feel like they See, now, this is the thing. I think that if it's a historical thing, it's one thing. But, you know, that's just me personally. Like, I wouldn't have a problem playing a game where you play as someone on 
on you know on the of the Axis powers. If it's I could see, I could see right? there there could definitely there would def not could there would be an outrage. Oh yes, yeah. oh abso- absolutely, sure. but it depends on how they portray I, it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't you can't just pretend history doesn't exist. Yeah, you know. And I know there's a lot of people that want to believe that today that you can just erase <laughs> things, but um, you know, I just I, I mean I, I don't know. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm out of I'm out of bullets there on that. On that <laughs> Shooting on that blanks particular. there, Gary. Oh no! I, I started to think of an idea, and then like I said it, and then I was like, I think I have something more to say, and then I didn't, and then I was like, well, <laughs> fuck it. So it here I am. To me, all the time, you know, yeah. the, in the words of Michael Scott, you just gotta keep saying things <laughs> until something finally clicks. There you go. But yeah, I mean, you know, it it would have been interesting, but it's just I don't know if. It's going to happen for a while. I think it'll happen one day, maybe in the a future World War II game, but I don't think the world is necessarily ready for it yet. Yeah, perhaps. I completely, I I agree. It's definitely, yeah. I don't. I think there would be outrage and everything. This, this I, I'm now on to the next article, but I gotta say, I'm on uh, yourgamer.net, and like, there's there. There's like an advertisement for I think a game or something. I feel like it's a mobile game, but like there there's barely any mention of the name. It's like on the top, and then you go on the right, and of course there's like a girl in an obviously not conducive like space uniform because it's just randomly showing off her cleavage, and I'm like, okay, that's cool, I guess. That just seems like it just makes yeah over sexualizing somebody just you know sell ads you know, but it works I think. Sex sells. <laughs> Uh, still does. Uh, there's now, according to Tom Phillips over at uh, Your Gamer, there's a new Pokemon game that just randomly came out, which I didn't know about, called Magikarp Jump. Um, he writes, "Move over, Go- Pokemon Go. There's a new mobile Pokemon game in town, Magikarp Jump. The app stars Pokemon most pathetic creature in a new Pokesport, jumping. But perhaps the most interesting in this game games." way of tackling its free-to-play mechanics. As you expect, there are lumps of currency available to buy with real or money, which you can spend on time-saving or cosmetic items. Prices for these bundles range from £1 to £34. Unusually, however, there is a hard limit on spending which cannot be exceeded ever. ever. The app limits you to 5,000 of its diamond currency and notes that this limit will not reset with time. This equates to around uh, 79 pounds, so kids cannot spend any more on that game. Uh, Magikarp Jump takes uh, tasks you with feeding your Magikarp, training it via various stat-boosting activities, and then taking it into a jumping battle against other trainers. Other Pokemon also make appearances within five minutes of playing. I was able to unlock Pikachu as a support character. Progressing through the game will unlock other creatures, new items for your Magikarp Ta- Magikarp tank power-ups and different Magikarp scale patterns. As with Pokemon Go, Magikarp Jump is an official game released by Pokemon Company, but nothing to do with uh, uh, Nintendo. I also kind of think that it's kind of cool that they set uh like a, a max amount that you could spend in the game because I remember hearing stories about like some uh, famous dudes like ch- child actually like spent thousands of dollars on like free to play games on his phone so that's kind of cool that they're doing that and I still I looked at the video of this game and I still don't understand a lick of what you're supposed to be doing I have no idea what you're doing I don't know if it's just like kind of like uh. Those old, um, I forget what they're called, but you would carry them around in your pocket and like you take steps and you would like have to feed the Pokemon and that, that would train them up. Is that basically what, what they, you're uh, doing? Is like you, you like do training with Magikarp so he can jump higher because it doesn't look like you do anything when he jumps, he just jumps. <laughs> wasn't it, what the hell are they called? What, like nano pets? Nah, was that, that what they were be, called? Uh, where like you, you had like a little like dog and you had to feed it and shit like that. <laughs> there was a Pokemon version though. Oh, really? Okay. Actually, I think nano. Nanopets a thing because I feel like I, I mean that was just a wild. I know, guess. I know Neopets used to be a thing. Neopets? Uh, no, Nanopets were also a thing. They were like little clip-on things you could carry around. Yeah, I remember Neopets too because I used to play that for some random reason. But uh, uh, most recently, I was talking to I think I was talking to Marta about she. I was actually into Neopets uh, for like a while. She, like she was really into it, and I was like, oh, that's strange. I did not expect that. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I remember uh, my sister playing the those nano pet games back in the day, and I just I remember like the the sadness that would come over us whenever like a pet would run away, even though it wasn't a real pet. <laughs> I was like, no, you know, he wouldn't feed it or whatever. 
It's kind of funny. Looking it's back. A, it's like Bitcoin, but instead of money, it's pets. There you go. Bazinga. That was such a good ref. I don't know. Fuck, what am I doing? Moving on. <laughs> Final Why are article. we here? <laughs> what is the meaning of life? Two Jersey kids. That is what it is. <laughs> Boom. Boom. When you go walk up the mountain trying to find, you know, the the famous seer or the meditator or, or the famous person that knows all and sees all, when you get up to that mountain, it's not going to be him there or her there. It's going to be me and Gary standing there. <laughs> we are the meaning of life. That is why you're here. That's why you're listening to us. We are the best in our opinion. That's just our biased opinion. Moving on. Unfortunately, layoffs has hit the Hitman developer IO Interactive. Tom Phillips, right, of Uber Gamer. Um, the troublish, troubled Danish developer, developer has laid off an unknown number of staff it announced today. The news comes less than two weeks after the publisher Square Enix shock announcement it would sell off the studio. The future of Hitman franchise remains unknown. IO statement uh, in full uh, follows. They write, quote, Today at IO Interactive, we had to make some changes to our studio, which will allow us to be better equipped for our future adventures. We're sad that great talent and good friends will be leaving the studio. We are doing everything possible to look after everyone affected. Thank you for your support and understanding. End quote. Fans had hoped another publisher would quickly scoop in to save the studio and publish Hitman's planned second season of, of episodes. As yet, there's been no public word. The wording of the statement above suggests, however, these layoffs could be part of a bid to slim down the company to perhaps ensure a sales go through. Square Enix's decision to sell IO Interactive came as a complete surprise to Hitman players, especially in the wake of positive reviews and solid, if not stellar, st stellar sales numbers for Hitman's first episodic season. The publisher stated its decision to dump IO was made, quote, to maximize player satisfaction as well as, a mar as market potential growing forward, end quote, and focus, quote, resources and energies on key franchises and studios, end quote. Um, that last bit from, you know, Square Enix about, you know, that was just straight PR speak. That was bullshit. Yep. Um, yeah. It is sad for people to uh, lose their jobs. But uh, the good thing is that they worked on Hitman, and it was such a huge hit. Uh did well on Metacritic, I believe. Uh, I'm sure they will be able to find a job in the future. I'm sure they'll be on their feet. But good luck to all those people out there. It's, it is kind of sad that Hitman did so well in the episodic series, and they, everyone was expecting a second second version of it, and they just got laid off. And I, I'm not sure who owns the IP right now for Hitman. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's IO Interactive. I feel like it's Square, uh, which is kind of sad. I don't know what they're going to do now with this franchise. They're going to give it to another developer to do an episodic series. Um, and you know, it could just, it, it would kind of suck if they gave it to another developer and now they're getting compared to this other developer and you know, it's going to be who did it better and you know, how yeah. these things go. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's kind of like a, basically a indication of the business world today where you have, you could do really well, do really great work, but never guarantees that you're going to be with a company for long. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. That's the, how the business world works. So, yeah, tip for everybody out there. Do something in technology. Everyone needs technology. <laughs> do something <laughs> technology-based. Uh, it'll help out. Uh, but, um, oh, I, for, I missed an article. Well, not really an article. It was Cat Castlevania apparently is coming out on Netflix, and I just linked the trailer. Uh, honestly, I never played Castlevania, the game, like the original game on the NES or SNES. There was another game on SNES. Um, never played those games. Uh, I think I, I started playing one on the Vita a while back, which I, I enjoyed. Um, honestly, even though I haven't played it, I, it's like an animated Netflix series. Looks fucking rad. Looks really cool. I like the aesthetic they have going there, and I feel like this could be a good Netflix series, especially if it's like only 10 to 15 episodes. It's kind of like basically a video game in itself. Uh, maybe you have, um, uh, Simon Belmont, uh, traveling, you know, each level cause the castle is supposed to be large. So maybe each episode is like traveling to the basically final boss. And it's kind of like, you know, you see in like Naruto or, uh, other samurai shows. I can't think off the top of my head. I mean, no, Naruto is like a ninja jutsu. So, but, um, it's like where you fight like this big boss basically at the end and they have some, you know, the hero figures out weakness and, you know, you know, the jazz, you know, the deal of how it works, Gary. Uh, but Gary, did you watch the trailer at all? I really hadn't. I, it wasn't something I already told you before this, 
I wasn't familiar with Castlevania. Damn you. Yeah, but you can still watch the Netflix trailer. It was still I, pretty cool. I actually didn't realize we had a trailer until, uh, unfortunately, while we were recording. So it's rather <laughs> unfortunate on my part. Oh, <laughs> uh, damn it. I did. When I was putting together the Google Doc, I thought of putting not the link of the article on in hyperlinks. I, I wanted to just, like, do. I should have just put a space underneath and said trailer. <laughs> should have done that. <laughs> Uh, I should have known better, Gary, because you don't. You know, if you, it's something you don't relate to, you don't click. No, you stubborn old bastard. Here. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Speaking of Netflix, though, um, House of Cards is coming out soon. It should you be know, at the end of May, and I'm kind of excited. I don't know. See, now I watched the first two seasons of that show, loved it, and then I thought the third season really just was so lame. It was just so unrealistic. Did you not? Like, did, you not the, did you not watch the fourth one? I didn't watch the fourth season. I, I just the, like the whole Russian president thing, and like I don't know, it just wasn't as good because I felt like the whole part about that show that was amazing was him trying to get into the White House, and then all of a sudden he got into the White House in like the second season. Like what? It should have been. <laughs> they should have had a much longer time of him trying to get into the White House, but fourth, he just got in so season, fast. And now fourth season, I think, brought it back. I feel like that was it was a good season, and you should check it out. See, yeah. I don't know. I heard. You said C. That was kind of weird. That, continue. Oh. <laughs> well, no, your audio also skipped on my uh, on my end as well. Sorry. <laughs> Who knows <laughs> but, what happened? Uh, uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, also, my dad. My. Go ahead. Uh, also, Game of Thrones. I saw the first trailer came out. Fuck, it yeah. looked rad. Gary, you're a Game of Thrones fan. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shit, I did not know that. Oh my god, Great we're show. gonna be talking about it like crazy. I feel like our Tuesday episodes are just gonna be us talking about Game of Thrones instead of any video game topics. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Oh, we can have a uh, uh, we can god. have a uh, reaction episode. Oh my god, I am so excited for this season. Uh, let's hope they don't fuck it up. <laughs> uh, but I mean, now that I, it's out of book territory, I mean, I read all the books, but I have no idea what's coming, and I'm kind of excited about it. I mean, that's what happened last season. I had no idea what was happening, so I was pumped, nervous every time any main character got into any tussle. I was like, oh, God, please do not die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. John so got me nervous. Uh, uh, that was like the ninth episode. Uh, I was getting yeah. real, real scared. I was like – I think the craziest thing about that show for me personally is like you go on Reddit after an episode's done or like after a season's done and you just read all these fan theories. Uh-huh. That's always cool. Like I remember when, like when Jon Snow died and then he came back to life, spoilers for anybody that's watching the show, you probably know this already. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, the Reddit, like the community surrounding that show is so awesome. Yeah. It's fucking crazy all the theories that go around that I – I do actually like explaining theories to – I remember I was sitting around uh, – it was back – it was after John. it was the season after Jon Snow died. Um, and it was summer – or was it – not summer. It was like fall, and we were sitting out in the backyard with my cousins, and I was like explaining to them the theory of why he's not going to die and who he is in relationship to uh, other characters that are not there anymore. And I was like blowing their minds and like, oh my god, <laughs> this makes so much sense. I was like, yes, that's what I that's what I love and that's why I like watching like uh, fan theories, even though some of them don't turn out to be true, but still cool to uh, listen it's to. It's like them. Um, Darth Jar Jar, it's just like that. Exactly, no, Gary. He took the it's, words it's right out of my mouth. No, nothing like that, actually. But I was going to say, it's, it's kind of like Westworld, if you've watched that show as well. And, Damn uh, it, I still need to finish that. I forgot about see, it. See, that show is awesome. It gets so much better. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it all the way through, but I would say, like, halfway through that season onward is insane. Do watch it, because it's it's just sick. Okay, I need to. That would be on my a list of things I need to finish watching. I have Westworld. I have Sherlock now. That's on Netflix and House of Cards. is going to be coming up. Uh, so I got plenty of things to watch now. So yay! And then also I have the normal uh, Critical Role, which is like every week. It's well, not this week because they're doing people are away, but uh, it's like fucking three hours of them doing D and D. But it's amazing, amazing three hours. Ah, uh, Gary. Before we go, do you have anything to say? Anything you want to say? You want to talk about before we leave? Well, uh, I think we should probably mention the fact that our <laughs> last episode got obscene download numbers. Uh, thanks to everybody out there. We're uh, 
We're not really sure what happened. I mean, it's a, it was a hot topic. Obviously, Destiny Two is you know what it is. You know, a lot of people are interested in seeing, uh, you know, reactions that people have to the trailers and everything, the gameplay reveal. But uh, we weren't expecting, you know, this? a thousand or eleven hundred plus downloads for that yeah. episode. So, wanted to say thanks to everybody. One thousand one hundred twenty nine right now. Yeah. So I mean, easily eclipsed every other episode we've ever released in terms of single download number or single episode download numbers and it also basically eclipsed certain months uh for download so <laughs> yeah ain't that we the really truth are, we we really appreciate it uh we love it thanks for tuning in guys uh, i'll see you guys again yes. on our tuesday episode we're on, we're, we're on pace to, to pass what we did in april and then this yeah. shit happens and we pass three thousand downloads for the month so that yay oh well, yeah <laughs> that's exciting I'm we're getting excited. there baby we're uh i really there. appreciate everyone that's listening that did listen to the last episode and hopefully you're going to be listening to this next episode now gary here's the test now if it's not a th- I'm I want a thousand now. That's the bar. Oh yeah, I think <laughs> that might be a little lofty. But hey, uh, fuck I want it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we seriously appreciate all you guys. Uh, if you are a new listener and you stayed this whole time, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really hope uh we put a smile on your face and you enjoyed listening to us discuss the news and discuss the bullshit that we talk about uh because we're two best friends and you know we want more best friends to join in on us we want more just everybody out there to come join in uh we would love interacting with you on twitter you can follow the podcast at two jersey kids um we also our personal pod uh, twitter handles we tweet uh, will be retweeted by the podcast so you can follow us um yeah a lot of we just really appreciate talking with you guys, talking about games with you guys. We can talk about anything you really want. Uh, and we'll interact with you because you guys are awesome. Uh, but, yeah, please hit that subscribe button if you think we deserve it. I think we do. I think Gary thinks we do. Um, and then go rate us on iTunes or whatever podcast app service that you use, uh, whether it be Stitcher. I know you rate there, but subscribe where you can. Uh, Overcast, you can subscribe. You can recommend us on Overcast. You can subscribe on Google Play, TuneIn, SoundCloud. Even though SoundCloud, since we don't really host on there, it's only like three episodes that go there. So, uh, yeah, it's a rotating, evol- revolving door of three episodes. So uh, there's that. Uh, we're... I, I try to put our podcast everywhere so people can get it. Uh, so, yeah, good. check us out or, you know, rate us, subscribe. Good stuff. But, yeah, uh, this has been Two Jody Kids, episode 39. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we hope you keep playing those games. Gary, say bye. Adios. Until next Tuesday, uh, have a good one. Bye.